Here's a look at the International Center in Toronto from Saturday and Sunday, March 14th and 15th. It's time now for the Can Race premiere with coverage of the Motorama Custom Car and Motorsports Expo. Hello everyone, welcome to Can Race. I'm your host Bryce Turner here from Motorama. Here's a look at what's coming up. Canadian Tire Series director Alex Nagy and driver Scott Steckley talk about Canadian Tire concluding its sponsorship of the Series and 22 car. Erica Thering talks about her upcoming Rookie of the Year season. Jared Fitzpatrick discusses his decision to race in Oscar, not NCATS this year. John Bickford provides the latest update on Canadian Motor Speedway. Past Truck Series champion and current Fox Sports analyst Todd Bodine joins me. That and much more, including reaction to some of the top news headlines from multiple drivers coming up. Canadian Tire announced that it will end its title sponsorship of NASCAR's Canadian Series after the 2015 season. It is also ending its sponsorship of Scott Steckley effective immediately. What was your reaction to the Canadian Tire ending its title sponsorship of this series? Um, you know... It happens in, in business and to be, I think the positive side of the thing is to be with Canadian Tire for nine years was incredible. Uh, not a lot of people can say that. So we we're really, really fortunate. It's been a great partnership. And, uh, you know, just like DuPont and, and uh, I mean, series and title sponsors and car owner sponsors, team sponsors, uh, hockey team sponsors, they all come to an end. They don't last forever. So, uh you know, I, I don't think it was a huge surprise, unfortunate, but uh, it's an opportunity to do something new with somebody different, so it's exciting times. Is there anything you can tell me in regards to candidates to take Canadian Tire's place or when a new title sponsor will be named? No, I can't comment on any candidates. Uh, our marketing department's working hard, obviously, to, uh, to uh, get a new entitlement sponsor, so timeline is not anything uh, set in stone. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year we're able to announce something, but uh, really there's just a lot of balls in the air right now, so we'll have to see where it, lays, where it lands. I'm here now with Scott Steckley, driver of the number 22 Dodge. What was your reaction to Canadian Tire ending its sponsorship of your team earlier than originally expected? Uh, we Our contract was up at the end of uh, December, so we, we knew it was coming. We had been working with Canadian Tire and a lot of their vendors trying to put a program together for 2016, and um, it just really didn't work out. And We have uh, Mobile Ones coming back with us, of course, AWMO Rights, Herb Transport, and all our local sponsors, but uh, right now we're in the search of a new title sponsor. And have you been in talks with any other potential sponsors? Uh, yeah, we, we're talking to a lot of different companies right now, and we're hoping uh, hoping something c comes together uh, in the near, near future. What would you say is the likelihood that you'll run a full season this year? Um, I'm hoping we do. I, I would say likely 90% will run the full season. I'm, I'm optimistic that, that uh, sponsorship's going to come through. All right, Scott Steckley, driver of the number 22 Dodge, thank you for speaking with me. Thank you very much. I mean, I was pretty surprised because I thought it was a great fit for the series. Canadian Tire is a great sponsor. Uh, the series NASCAR did a great job promoting it. Um, I'm sure NASCAR has got something up there, Steve, to find some uh, other title sponsors. It's a tough one. I mean, uh, obviously, you hate to lose sponsors at any time in this uh, motorsports game because that's what makes the world go round. But uh, obviously, they've been a great supporter of the series for a lot of years now, and we appreciate everything they have done. And uh, I'm sure they'll continue to support in some way, shape, or form for motor racing in Canada and um, I wish them the best of luck on their endeavors and uh, hopefully the series picks up something else and we keep moving on and get bigger and better ourselves. Some developing news from late January, early February, Apex Motorsports Group announced the sale of Barry Speedway to Burroughs Creek Event Grounds. The result, Barry Speedway is now closed. The NCATS race scheduled for September therefore cancelled. To take his place on the schedule, Sunset Speedway, which will host the Leyland Industries 300, presented by Johnsonville on June 20th. It was a surprise to us, just like the world. Um, you know, I think we all found out at the same time. So, but you know, after the dust settles, we understand it. It's it's business and their situation with the concert that surrounded them and everything else. I'm sure they had a lot of the logistics they couldn't or tried to work through and maybe couldn't. So. Uh, you know, I think the unfortunate part is that we lose a speedway in Ontario, but um, it's not like it closed. It, it was it was a different scenario. So, 
uh barry speedway was a great place to go race i race there our series race there there's a lot of history it's unfortunate but uh you know like the title sponsorship it's a new opportunity and now we're going to sunset so it's a new partnership that we're looking forward to uh, you know it was kind of devastating because that's where i cut my late model teeth i was actually one of the very first late models on the new configuration at barry speedway uh, it's a very iconic racetrack in the motorsports world in ontario especially with the history there um, it's kind of sad because i love to always go into that racetrack and it's going to be sad to see it go but uh, you know it's good that sunset speedway is now on the uh, on the schedule and uh, it's good for the industry and uh, you know we'll just uh, we keep on going it's, it's upsetting but uh, that's just the way it goes i don't know when i heard that i mean it, it it's sad to see it go because i only raced there once and i liked racing there it's a cool little track but uh I mean, they good, did a good job picking another track to race at. It should be fun. Sunset's a nice track. Two grooves are racing, uh, nice pits, good crowd. They always get good crowds out there every weekend, so hopefully we get a good crowd there for our race too. And how did the series decide on which track would take Barry's place on the schedule? We wanted to stay in Ontario, of course. We wanted to get more Ontario dates, so... Uh, it was it was ge geographically it worked out great and we've already talked to sunset on and off for several years so you know we always uh, create relationships in advance for when things like this happen we're ready to go and what should fans watch for at the race at sunset i think uh they did a really nice job when they reconfigured the track and rebuilt it uh, with a compound bank and i think you're going to see a lot of side-by-side -side action a lot like uh, autodrome chaudier and auto clearing motor speedway in saskatoon so I think you're going to see an incredible race. Uh, it's, it's good. It's, uh, it keeps it in the same geographical area, which is good for uh, our sponsors and our partners of Canada's Best Racing Team. But um, it's an excellent racetrack. Uh, they do an excellent job promoting the racetrack. It's got great pavement on it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to race there. I thought it was pretty good. They're, they're both really close, like uh, geographically and uh, so it shouldn't be too much different for the teams traveling and funding wise and um, I think that track will suit the series and the, our type of racing quite well. Very good. I mean we're really excited. We're, I think it's going to be a great race. Uh, I know I obviously I know the racetrack as far as how the racing can go and I know the caliber of guys that are racing in this class and it's going to be a phenomenal event. There's no doubt about it. Sheriff Fitzpatrick announced over Twitter that he will not be returning to the Canadian Tire Series this season and will instead run late models in Oscar. Fitzpatrick has 11 wins in 89 and NCAT starts. I'm here now with Jared Fitzpatrick. What went into your decision not to race in NCATs this season? I mean, mostly just the fact that it costs so much money to run that deal now. And, and you know, now being a family guy and whatnot, I like to be a little closer to home with my baby girl and my uh, fiance, Laura. And, and her family's already involved in the Super Late Model Division, so um, so if I'm going to get out of any series, why not go a little bit faster? <coughs> what is your mindset going into racing late models this year? Ah, obviously our first goal is we want to win a race. I think we're more than capable of winning a race. Um, build a brand new car to try and go after the championship, but there's obviously a lot of guys there that have been there for a lot longer than I have, so I just got to feel out what these kind of cars drive like and uh, get used to it real quick. What are you looking forward to the most in racing Oscar? Uh, I'm just going to say, like, you know, being close to home, being with Alora's family and, and, and being with a bunch of friends. I mean, it's, it's hard to go run NASCAR and bring all your friends and whatnot because um, people can't travel all the time. So I'm looking forward to being close to home. But if you were given the right opportunity, would you return to NCATS in the future? No, nah, I definitely wouldn't. I mean, I've been there, done that. You know, we've proven ourselves. We won a lot of races there. And, and maybe we never won a championship, but Lady Luck had a lot to do with that. So, um, moving on. All right. Thank you for speaking with me, Jared Fitzpatrick, and good luck with your racing this year. Thank you. It's obviously a loss to lose to to have a, a star or a great talent like Jared and a character guy, not in a series. But um, things change. You know, I've been fortunate to watch him race all throughout his career. Raced against his father, uh, knowing them for a long time, and I think Jr. is doing something now that he's really comfortable with and happy with. And I wish him all the best. I was pretty surprised finishing second in the championship, really close to my brother. Uh, I thought he was going to come back and try to get it for next year. And he was a great competitor. It was good for the series, so I was pretty surprised. Good. <laughs> no, just kidding. I mean, Jr. and I are good friends, and 
I know why he made his decision and so on. I respect it. And uh, it's a tough game when you're trying to take money out of your own pocket and uh, without finding a, a title sponsor for himself and so on. It was hard. And uh, spending the family money and, and so on, it, it just gets to a point where it's too much. So I respect his decision and John's decision. It sucks. We're going to miss him. Uh, he's a great friend of mine, good competitor, obviously, and uh, always a top dog. So. We're going to miss them, but uh, hopefully we can still put on a good show and get out there and have lots of cars and uh, make the fans happy. Erica Thering will contend for Rookie of the Year this season, driving full-time for the first time in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Thering will drive for Canada's best racing team. Erica has an average finish of 12th from five starts in 2014. I'm here with Erica Thering, driver of the number 87 Ford. What, is, what are your goals heading into your first full-time season? Pretty much, I just I want to finish every race. Um, I'm really looking for Rookie of the Year, um, and then you know if everything goes well, I'd, I'd at least like a top ten uh, in the points finish. I'd say. Is uh, your first full-time season too early to be thinking championship? Oh goodness, yes. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, you can't go into it thinking that you can't. But it's always a dream, right? Not only will this be your first full-time season, but it will be with the new team. Have you had the opportunity to get to know your team yet? Yeah, I've had uh, pretty much all winter. We've been uh, con we've been staying in contact. Um, you know, I've, I've been here once or twice, and Joy's been out there. You know, just hanging out and getting to know each other, getting to know cars. It's it's been awesome. Yeah. And what is the most difficult part of getting to work with a new team? Um, I think difficult. I don't know. I, I, I just think this is really easy. I mean, Joey approached me and we thought we'd have a really great sponsorship together. You know, we can do great things like um, this race uh, race car by Ava, just stuff like that, you know. So I, it was honestly pretty easy. <laughs> Eric Thering, driver of the number 87 Ford, thanks for speaking with me. Thank you for your time. This season, Erica Thering will run full time and compete for Rookie of the Year. She made five starts last season. What is the maximum number of races a driver can run and still be eligible for Rookie of the Year the following season? It is seven. And Up what seven. is that any different from the other series? Uh, it's the same in all touring series. Yes. Right. I'm here now with John Bickford of Jeff Gordon Incorporated. What is the latest update on Canadian Motor Speedway? Well, we're working at it. It's a slow, uh, tedious process. Uh, we're um, we're learning a lot about the pathway it takes to get there. You know, uh, not a lot of speedways have been built up here, so there's not a, a, a rule book, as we might say, in racing on how to go about building a speedway. So each each step we learn something, and uh, I think uh, it's only a, another year or so before uh, we actually have some uh, real uh, substance occurring, you know, things coming out of the ground. Last year we moved the creek, which is significant. Um, this year we're working on site plans. Um, we have established IBI as the architectural firm. Uh, we're getting close to XYZ dimensions of the uh, uh, actual track, so we'll be able to go up to grandstands and various things like that. So we're moving along, it just it's slow. What is Jeff Gordon's role in working with the Speedway? Well, Jeff is designing the track. So when you uh, look out there or when you play the video game of Canadian Motor Speedway and you can say, wow, this is a really tough corner, man. Uh, how did this corner get to be like this? You can say, well, Jeff Gordon designed it to be tough. So that's pretty cool. What are your thoughts on the public's reaction to the Speedway? Well, I think the public reaction is, would you please get this thing built? Because I really want to go to the race. I'm tired of you, you guys uh, not getting this thing done. So they're, um, they're pushing pretty hard. I, I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding how how hard it is to do this and how long it actually takes. And I think the, the public are used to building a house, and it takes six months to build a house. And when you build a racetrack... It takes a long time to build a racetrack, and it costs a lot of money, so you have to raise money, you have to do a number of things. So uh, the public just doesn't understand the construction process. But I'll tell you, they want it. They're pushing. What was your reaction to Jeff's decision to run full-time for the final time this season? After I stopped crying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, uh, I, uh, I knew that it was, um, it was coming. I didn't know when. Uh, but I'm proud of him. I mean, I think that he's... Uh, chosen to stop on top 
and that's not been seen in, uh, historically. And I think it, uh, it says a lot about who Jeff is, that he wants to be on top, and uh, he wants the fans that follow him, support him, to not go out and embarrass himself, but go out on top. And uh, I think he's looking forward to uh, a lot of new things he's going to be able to do. I'm sure some of that time will be spent with his children. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm proud of him. And what are your thoughts on this new 3M paint scheme in partnership with the 24 team? Well, 3M's a fabulous company. As you can see, I'm looking at the car, it's spectacular. Uh, Jeff's very excited about 3M, and 3M's a complement to everything else that we do. Um, I don't think it could be placed in a better location. Right, John Bickford of Jeff Gordon Incorporated, thank you for speaking with me. Hey, have a nice day. I love Canada. All right. I'm here with Kendi Podesta, who is a consultant engineer with Canadian Motor Speedway. What has been the toughest challenge so far in creating the Speedway? Well, you know what, Bryce? Uh, I, I've been on this for about 10 years, and I think one of the most difficult uh, parts of the process that we've been through is the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, when you kind of look back and, and you wonder why you got where you got, um, the reality is that even though we had unanimous support from the town of Fort Erie, and the region of Niagara, and no significant issues raised by the province of Ontario in the correspondence that they provided us when they were looking at our documents. We still ended up going through an Ontario Municipal Board hearing because there was a local group that paid $150 to appeal or to, to take us to the hearing. That was a, and that took a, a long time and a lot of money to sort out, even though we won at the end of the day, it it uh, really was a significant obstacle in the in the process. What are, what is the latest timeline on the project? I'm a betting man, and there's never any guarantees in what you do because you're dealing with people that you need to get approvals from. But as a betting man and somebody who is pretty familiar with where we're at on this, I I'm going to say 2018 may slip to 2019 just depends on what the construction uh, the weather during construction actually presents us with in terms of uh, difficulties and how does this track compare with other tracks in Canada you, you know um, I'm an engineer and I'm really a neophyte when it comes to uh, uh, racing I've been to Richmond and in, in um, in the United States and I've been to Richmond and that's a good thing because the three-quarter mile oval that we're proposing is really intended to be a reflection of what is in Richmond. As far as the uh, generally racing in Ontario, I can't really offer you a comment. I know we're going to set a standard here in the world for, Na for NASCAR type racing and, it, and I think it's going to be a real I think it's going to be a boon to local racing in, in Ontario and Canada because it, it makes us um, worldly. All right, Kendi Podesta, who's a consulting engineer with Canadian Motor Speedway, thanks for speaking with me. Bryce, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here now with Greg Bardish from Michigan International Speedway. What's going on at the track this year? Uh, uh, this year, uh, 2015, we've got another set of NASCAR uh, event weekends with our June and August race weekends, June's 12th through 14th, and August is 14th through 16th with the uh, highlight by the Quicken Loans 400 and Pure Michigan 400s. And then uh, we've also got our Wine and Beer Fest, which is all Michigan wines and beers, as well as uh, Faster Horses, which is a three-day country music festival and camping. And um, so we got a lot, a lot. And then, uh, you know, track rentals and other things that we have going on at the track this year. So we're, we're busy. Is there any news yet about what's going on for the VIP experiences at the track during the NASCAR weekend? Yeah, our VIP experiences uh, keep expanding just like they have in every year, and we always find more and more uh, ways to allow more access for our fans. And uh, new this year, we're selling a driver intro pass for $75 where fans can actually um, go down on the track, sign the start finish line, be right up by the stage as the driver's being introduced. So we've got that going, and then we have a new. Um, uh, a, a festival that we're going to be announcing uh, on Tuesday, uh, March 17th, actually, 
we're gonna come out with some news about some things we have planned for the weekend. So it'll be fun. The viewers will have to check that out for sure. And what are your thoughts on the Hendrick Motorsports dominance at the track in recent years? Um, I think, uh, yeah, that's a tough question. You put me in a tough spot with that one. I mean, they, they've they obviously been running well with um, last year Jimmy and Jeff winning. You know, Junior's had some success here too. And uh, But, you know, you can't overlook we're in the backyard of the auto industry. Uh, Roush. You know, they always have a good run there. Penske always does well. So um, I think it's just a sign of Hendricks doing really well in the sport overall. I don't think it's they necessarily have one thing figured out at Michigan over the others. And I know it's really competitive for all those guys because it's Roger Penske's backyard. It's Jack Roush's backyard. They really all want to do well. So um, it just kind of keeps raising the bar for each one. That's kind of where their competition is going for. And so far, Hendricks has been pulling out the last two years. But, um, you know, before that, Joey Logano had won. Uh, we had Biffle win back-to-back -back years. So uh, there, there, there's no shortness of uh, competition going on there. Definitely be some drivers trying to break that Hendrick streak for sure. Craig Bartish from Michigan International Speedway, thanks for speaking with me. Hey, absolutely, man. Good luck. I'm here now with past Truck Series champion Todd Bodine. How would you sum up your racing career? Well, I've had a good career. Uh, you know, I've been driving for... 23 years, so I had a long driving career, but before that, I worked on them, I built them. I started when I was 13. Uh, I actually started to racing. Uh, my father owned a racetrack in upstate New York, so I've been going to races since I was born, uh, and I'm 51 now, so that's a long time, but you know, I've, I've worked on them, I've built them, I crew chiefed them, I changed tires on pit road, I did all that before I ever drove them. And uh, so I've been driving for 23 years, and, and now I'm kind of on the other side. I'm, I'm going to the TV side and doing a little analyst work for Fox and the trucks and having fun doing that. Do you have any racing plans for, do you have any racing plans for this year, NASCAR or otherwise? Well, I would like to. I definitely always want to drive, uh, but it takes a lot of money. You know, you got to have good sponsorship, good marketing partners to make it work. And, and right now I don't have any, and we're working on it. We're trying to... Trying to get some, but you know, uh, this TV deal, I, I'm enjoying it and I'm having fun. So if, if I don't get to race anymore, it's been a good career and I'm good with that and we'll go on and keep doing some TV. But if you had the right opportunity, you would return to NASCAR? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, I could be 80 years old and using a walker and I'm going to want to drive a race car. You know, it's, it's what I do. It's fun. I love it and enjoy it. And uh, if, if I get the opportunity, I'll, I'll do it some more. What is your favorite part of being an analyst at Fox Sports? Wow, you know, it's, it's a different world on that side of the microphone, on that side of the racetrack. And uh, to be able to get up there and, and share my knowledge, uh, the, all the years of racing uh, with, the, with the fans and everybody watching on TV, uh, to me that's satisfying, to, to let them know how, how I see the racing, how I felt about racing and what's going on and explaining what I think is happening uh, it's, it's pretty interesting to be able to do that and, and to be able to uh, share my knowledge with the, with the public. All right, Todd Bodine, past Truck Series champion and current analyst with Fox Sports, thank you for speaking with me. Thank you. Thanks for watching Can Race's coverage of Motorama. Be sure to check back with my YouTube channel and carnets.ca for the latest updates. The next scheduled edition of Can Race will preview the Canadian Tire Series opener at CTMP that will be posted on Friday, May 15th. But for now, to round out today's show, here's a look at some of the cars on display at Motorama.